we have a special guest, a Dubai-based artist named Dorian C. Gray, who I've come across as a result of working in some fashion projects in Dubai. Hello, Cindy. Hello, how are you? And um, Dorian C. Gray is the name I've come to know you by, and thank you very much for meeting. We're at the Shakespeare Cafe here at the uh, on Shakeside Road. Extremely exactly. shabby chic. <laughs> So really, I, I come to interview you today thinking it's all about fashion and just fashion design, but I come to find that uh, I would definitely just call you a, a pure artist of multi-mediums, and I think maybe if we just have a kind of free-flow chat, just for the people, the audience who want to listen, to just kind of talk about what's on your mind and tell us a little bit about you and what you do. So where where would you where should we start? Um, hi Sydney, I'm trying to find the microphone on this, it's kind of cool. Um, <laughs> it's cool. I, I think while you were talking, I, I was just looking at your eyes, I love your eyes, I think you've got beautiful, beautiful <laughs> eyes. Talking about world and the fashion, I think feeling is fashion more than anything else. And inspiration for fashion or creating fashion comes from a variety of different sources. I don't think you can put a finger on one thing and say this is fashion, but it is all consuming and it is life. Fashion is art, and to me, fashion is architecture as well, but in a way, it's something that's slightly more fluid and dynamic as it moves, and you capture the light, and it's momentary. It lasts a fraction of a second, and it's an idea, and it's pure. Um, the three different things that I do, one's architecture, one's fashion, and one's art. All three of them have uh, various restrictions in how they go about architecture, something you spent a lot of money on ideally as a client and um, it's something that you want to build as a home for yourself or a monument that somebody can look at and feel moved by it or feel at home at the same time. It needs to be realistic to a certain degree where you have a zone in there where you can live and be alive or feel comforted whereas fashion is something that you don't spend a lot of money on relative to, to architecture. It's something that can change with your mood and you can afford to be a little uncomfortable in it, like a stiletto, which is not natural to us human beings to wear a stiletto, but it does make you more attractive as a female, and it does attract the male species' attention more than it would if you were flat-footed. But then again, there's times when you can take that stiletto off um, and then be normal again, and maybe be unfashionable for a while. The least amount of restrictions you get with art, because it can be anything you feel or anything that evokes a thought or a feeling, um, and there are no restrictions. A chair could be a glass of water. You necessarily not have to sit in it, but it is you. Uh, uh, it's an expression of you that people can either take, look at, feel, or not feel at all. But you have created something in time, and then you move on from that to something else. And the way fabric is, I think, the fabric of life, you weave into these three different disciplines. And more subconsciously and sometimes consciously. And I think that's what I like about my life at the moment is it's uncalculated and it's, it is what it is. I'm not certain about a lot of things. I think life is drawn by love, sometimes by the absence of it, when beauty is created by the absence of it. I think when you are in love, you think of nothing else but love, so you're not able to create, you're only able to be in love. But the absence of it draws you to create, uh, to maybe mask the pain. Yep. Um, or to maybe reach that high or to keep you busy in a different sort of environment and maybe want to be noticed or just want to be depressed and alone. Um, I have to say, just talking to you so far here, uh, what I've really picked up and I really appreciate is that, that concept about the artist and how they create and, and just reminding how a lot of times some of the best art that's created is, is coming from not necessarily being always in a happy place that it can come from another source as a motivation to help to help an artist create. That's really interesting. Does that uh, make sense? <laughs> uh, I think, Cindy, um, like for me, I can't create anything when I'm happy because when I'm happy, I'm, I'm just busy being happy. I can't cool. think of anything else. Um, most it. of the time, I'm just depressed and anxious, um, feel lonely. Um, and I don't know if I ever actually want to change that because I like that feeling. Um, I'm quite antisocial most of the time. Um, 
I think from that deprivation of, uh, of anything, you want to create something uh, just because there is nothing. To fill the space. To fill yeah. the space. Uh, yeah. um, I can dig that. But yeah, um, <laughs> I mean, love is beautiful, but it's a utopia. Um, it's something that is not real, I feel. And again, it's like, uh, like Nirvana. You can achieve Nirvana just like you can achieve love. Uh, but it's not there in any sort of a permanent sense. Um, and I think um, I stick to most of the Zen sayings. I think Zen is about everything and it's about nothing at the same time. I think it's quite hard to explain to somebody. It's just something that you can feel. And I'm hoping that Cindy and myself, through this interview, yeah. will help you feel something. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. Well, I mean, if we can just talk about you as a person, your background. So we found I found out so far about you is that you're half Omani, right? And half Kashmiri Indian. Okay, and that you grew up in America, is that right? I grew up in uh, Chicago, in Minneapolis. Um, and after that, a bit of Scotland, uh, a little bit of England, some of Africa, and uh, now Dubai, the UAE. What uh -huh. I love uh, about Dubai is the fact that you can reinvent yourself and be who you want to be. Nice one. Yeah. Um, you know, I could be the Sultan of Baghdad today. <laughs> I could be a sweeper tomorrow. Um, and then after that, I could be an alien from, you know, riding a horse into, into, into a lot of things. But I think that's what I love about Dubai is the fact that you are who you are um, and nobody judges you. And the reason nobody judges you is because they don't really care. Uh, they're here to make some money, you're here to make some money, you're here to have a good time while you're making that money. And that's what life is about, it's not about reality. Uh, it's about a dream and Dubai is a dream. Uh, and the bubble has never burst. It just gets bigger. Can I talk to you tangibly about, or actually ask you, um, in terms, back to the original fashion question, uh, do you have any plans for, what are your plans, what are you, what are you developing with fashion right now in Dubai? Um, I think with fashion, uh, really in Dubai, you know, I've been talking to quite a few people and they ask me, well, what do you want to do business-wise? Money is something that I've really never understood. I really don't know how to, to set something up as a business. I think more than anything, I'm just growing organically and doing what I feel. And I think a lot of people are approaching me to have stuff in their store. And, I'm not really sure how to react to that, quite honestly. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if that's a good thing or if that's a bad thing. I think um, it's a good thing. You know, one of the, one of the bad things about that, I, I, I I'll tell you, Cindy, is yeah. uh, the fact that once you become a business, you do more of what you have to do yeah. that the clients want you to do as yeah. opposed to what you want to do. And your public um, persona as well, like really kind of monitoring that. I can and, understand that, yeah. And, um, you know, like... Like for example, you know, like an artist, uh, I was absolutely amazed by was Salvador Dali, and uh, he's wow. known for yeah. his realism and melting yeah. clocks. Yeah. And, uh, but when you go to Girona and and look at the work of Salvador Dali, he was absolutely amazing and uh, extremely prolific in everything that he did, which is not always known for. So at a point, I'm thinking maybe I'm going to be forced to produce things that I don't want to do because I've gotten used to the money now. The mm -hmm. money's good. Do I want to do that or not? I'm not really sure. Um, I just feel like, like with fashion, I'll just be like a bubblegum <laughs> and get stretched into the directions that I have to get stretched into. But mainly, I just want to create and then go back into the hole that I came from and then be seen for a few moments and then go back in again. I'd really like for most people to not know who I am. I prefer to live in a virtual world. Uh, the, the who is Dorian C. Gray question, right? Uh, you know, the Dorian yeah. C. Gray question, I mean, Dorian C. Gray is a man who is conflicted by vanity. And, uh, I mean, he's a person uh, that is absorbed, self-absorbed by, um, by beauty and, um, and never wants Sting to young. age ever. And yeah, Sting Sting young, young. You know? And hopefully he stays that way. Forever young. And you know, from the story of Dorian Gray, who's yeah. uh, an Oscar Wilde character, the one thing that I like to change about about him is the fact that nobody knows who he, who he is. He's almost like Kaiser Soze from The Usual Suspects. Where or, do you know, even for a second, which you reminded me of a little bit, like, not in the same regard, but you know, like in Gossip Girl, there's a mysterious person who's reporting, not about what they do as a task, but just the fact that they remain mysterious, like in the community. Like, they exist, and they, they're known, but like, nobody knows who that person is. 
Yeah. And that's what I like about the fact that we're doing an audio interview because I know who you are now, but a lot of people don't necessarily know who you are. Yeah, you know, I, I think that's kind of cool. Um, to know your brand. I want them to get to know your brand. I mean, can I also just say real quick, how I came across you in the first place is um, I come to find that who I thought was you was actually a muse yeah. that you told me about was your muse who I met at a couple different occasions, one of them being at the Fashion Forward event and another one at a networking uh, evening called Thrive. Uh, and I asked, who's your name? He said, Dorian C. Gray. And then I turn up here and it's not the same person. Oh, yes, that was my muse. So, um... That's quite cool, you know. Uh, I think the one like thing about surreal, muses a little bit is, surreal. Uh, <laughs> muses drive you to do things in certain directions. They pull you. Um, their energy affects yours, you know, sometimes positively, sometimes negatively. But that always comes out in, in what you do, and it develops you. And um, and I think every now and again, uh, a muse has to die, <laughs> and uh, you have to find a new muse. So yeah. you, you mourn. The mourning lasts a, a few days, minutes, hours, seconds, weeks, uh -huh. and then uh, a new muse is born, and that pulls you in a different direction altogether. Can I just say real quick about muses, what I really respect even saying the word, is because when you do come from a fashion background, and I got to spend time in Paris uh, around some great set designers, fashion designers, photographers, and the people who you look at in fashion that, you, that I highly regard, they really talk about having a muse. For example, John Galliano, uh, Karl Lagerfeld, they, they, they had muses. And these ladies, I just love. They're just amazing. And, and I kind of off and on would like to have considered myself a muse to say musicians or fashion designers at certain points. Um, so for you to say that you have one, for me already, can I just say, gives me a huge amount of um, points and respect toward you because... I think a lot of people don't even know what a muse is, and the fact that you have one, have more than one, I think is really uh, a good, a good, healthy thing for your, uh, for your art, for your production of your art. Oh, most definitely, yeah. Say. Most, <laughs> most, uh, most definitely. Uh, you know, in Cindy meeting, you, you're just full of energy, um, <laughs> and, and I like that. Um, I didn't really know what to expect today or what not to expect. Uh, <laughs> um, you give me a general idea of uh, of what to sort of prepare, but. I sort of skimmed through it and I didn't want it to cloud my judgment and um, I wanted to evolve at that moment more spontaneously than anything else. So, you know, it's been really awesome. I mean, at the moment I'm distracted by the glitter on your toes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, it, it's, it's, it's been really beautiful meeting you and um, I appreciate this. Yeah, no, awesome. So, I mean, just to, just to say, so you do do fashion design, is it menswear? No. I, at the moment, only do menswear. menswear. I'm moving yeah. into the, the female silhouette, uh, mm -hmm. hopefully within the year or so. Um, I'd like to get into swimwear, just because I think we are from the water, and feeling wet skin um, against a woman, I think, is infinitely sensual. So the first thing I will move into when I do do women's wear in swimsuits, uh, but at the moment, it's only men's. Mm -hmm. You know, moving back to the, the original times, more I mean, the original times, it's, it's moving back to creation where you see the male species in, in most animals are the most vibrant, like you have peacocks, you know, or the lion, <laughs> and the females are relatively bland, but there is sort of a phase shift uh, in the human species where uh, the women are the ones that have to look pretty. So yeah, I mean, you see, look at the Afar tribe in the north of Africa. Well, the men uh, put on makeup, uh, they do a dance, and they court a female. So uh, at the moment, I'm fascinated by that. But um, you know, eventually, I will be and am constantly drawn to the female form. Uh -huh. And and you've been doing some videos. Like, what um, is this true? Because one of the things that caught my attention again with your brand name is there's a very well-known dancer in town, Christopher Lawrence, and it appears as though he's starred in one of your videos. Is that true? Uh, very much so. Um, what I liked about Ghost Christopher... Uh, <laughs> he's yeah, awesome. Christopher he's an amazing really cool. individual. Shout out, big up. <laughs> uh, definitely, definitely big, big up, man. He's um, cool, man. He's definitely down with G.O.D. He's one of the realest, realest people I've seen. Um, Can I just stop you for a second and tell you, he was my first entry point to all of Dubai. He, um, my little boy started dance lessons with the L, and he was felt like a real gateway into the whole scene in Dubai because I on another interview I talked about how before I got into music it started with dance but he was actually like my portal into all of Dubai I just want to say that oh no right. definitely I yeah. mean Seattle, Seattle was really cool I mean you know we met with him a couple times uh, his hair is really organic his hair is uh, out of the control man yeah, so I mean, cool I love um, it and you know he's up for a challenge uh, you gotta be up for a challenge he's a good networker he does um, really good yeah. work I mean you know I don't know much about his networking skills I know him 
you know, from uh, from the video, we did stuff together, we spoke briefly. But I liked his energy, I liked his positivity. Um, I think positivity is good, you know, that's where um, we push the concrete aside and then uh, life goes out of that. And uh, that's what CL is, you know, and I think he bought a very different energy and vibe uh, to that whole video. I think that was, was a good uh, choice. Yeah. Good choice. Yeah. Good Thank choice. You. Like Thank good you. choice for an ad campaign. I, I, as a news or an ad campaign, definitely I could see why like he could front the bit yeah. of a um, you know campaign for you. And and then um, so so then just the other artworks that you get up to. I guess your your architecture background. Do you have websites that we can? find out more about you or what do you think for that people well, want to find out I've, more I've, about you I've got a website it's doriancgray.com for the fashion there's not much that you can find out about me on that it's, it's about the fashion brand uh, yeah. and I do architecture which does not have a website as of yet uh, and I do art at the moment I'm fascinated uh, with insects which are almost like alien creatures um, architecture I've got you know projects that are ongoing for a few years uh, stuff in Qatar stuff in Iran stuff in um Minsk in Russia. Wow. Uh, things in Dubai. Very um, busy. Very. Um, architecture. Uh, I, would say, I would say consumed, not busy. I think, you know, like mm -hmm. we were talking earlier about words being derogatory. Yeah. I think busy is like a derogatory word. Uh, I think I'm just consumed by it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's things that you've just got to go through sometimes. Um, architecture is more uh, than just coming up with an idea. Uh, a lot of it is reality. And I think with architecture, what you learn is um, everything is in the detail. Because architecture tends to be larger than life, uh, but as a human being, what you notice is door handles, you know, or, or windows, or or views from a certain perspective and standpoint. So uh, it alters your perspective, uh, or sorry, perspective, uh, on, yeah, <laughs> on on how to do things. But yeah, so uh, you know, an architecture is is something that we all are part of. Yet it is subconsciously around us, and we don't think of it in uh, intangible terms but the art uh, is something that I'm growing with all the time uh, and you might have some um, gallery uh, installation somewhere I think um, maybe, right at Coming the up? moment uh, there's only one installation up which is at the ladies club uh, in Jumeirah oh, nice one. and that was a self-portrait into the psychological stance of a male human being at the moment Wow. Uh, but I'm working on a, a few pieces at the time um, and I can't wait to see what uh, they actually turn out looking like I think you know in art as in anything else there's a lot of research and development that goes behind the piece uh, which most people don't ever see what you maybe see is a line on the canvas but there is a lot of feeling a lot of emotion a lot of time maybe endless countless hours of time and research uh, that's gone into creating that one line on that canvas and then again it's there for a second and in the larger picture of life it's lost again which is what life's about it's not about permanence it's about the permanence of change and I think that's what I'd like to get through with uh, with everything that I do, whether it be fashion, art, or architecture. Mm -hmm. Well, I can certainly say it's an absolute breath of fresh air talking to you, Dorian C. Gray. Awesome. Who is Dorian Thank C. You. Gray? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely amazing. You've really inspired me, and you've actually made me relax quite a lot because just remembering just to just to be who you are as an artist, to just create why we create, um, what some visions are for others, and to just remind yourself what your visions are for yourself, right? Yeah. I think, maybe? Yeah. That's what I've got yeah. out today. Yeah, um, I mean, for me, it's, it's just been sort of a dialogue with you more than anything else. It's almost been like me and you are having a private conversation and everybody else is eavesdropping. Very curious to see how it turns out uh, more than anything else, because it's a memory that will remain you for the rest of that's your life. It. That's uh, it. You know, and that's important. I mean, instead of just sitting on your sitting on your backside, it's like, let's just do something, yeah, you know? Yeah. Right. This yeah, I mean, great. Uh, unless you're, in, you know, in utter bliss with, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, a tub of ice cream and you're watching SpongeBob SquarePants Fair and Square. Patrick uh, <laughs> in a pineapple <laughs> under the sea. <laughs> awesome. Okay, cool. So Dorian C. Gray, and that's um, D O R I A N. And a G R E Y Correct. At, dot com. Dot com. Okay, so everyone check it out. Thanks Ciao. for your time today. Yeah. Take care. <laughs>